Well, good afternoon. It's November 8th. It's local media time. <laughs> this is the way I stay focused. What is going on with this TV? Oh, it's not plugged in. Get the room all up and running here. What happened with my latest infestation and what I did about it. This happened within the last couple of days and I haven't made any videos about it. So this is, this is it. This is what happened. Actually, almost every time I have issues, those issues are still might be there. They, they could last a couple weeks. And um, especially that powdery mildew, which went on for a month. I think I was seeing it and dealing with it and did different things with different plants about it. Oof. Aphids. I've dealt with aphids before. They were really easy to deal with outside. But inside, I've never had to deal with them so I didn't really know exactly what I was gonna do. I've already looked up videos about how to deal with them and then that was a while ago, so I wasn't sure I remembered. So I kind of revisited that. They do talk about neem, mixing neem oil into your spray and spray it down without damaging the flower. So we don't wanna put anything terrible on them. One thing that I did put in there was I sprayed a lot of this in the tent around the plants. I didn't care if it even touched the plants. I'm thinking of it as like house cleaning. When you're going around cleaning your house and spraying, are you taking your plants into another room so that you can clean a room? No, you're still spraying around them and they still survive. So I use that as my you know, my test for whether or not I should be cleaning with this stuff in the tent. And I said yes, and I said yes, because I want to do everything I can to dissuade these terrible um, aphids from overtaking the tent, which is what they were about to do. And it was, I mean, I get a little nauseated here talking about it, thinking about it, but what I did, um, I did take some neem spray, I put some in the water and and I clean the tent. I put diatomaceous earth in there. I gotta look. I have to I have to observe while I talk to you so I know what I'm doing here. There's the diatomaceous earth all over. Alright. End up doing major major damage to something around here. Hang in here. Oh, I see. The whole thing came off, so I'm sticking the end of this into the dirt and then pouring the water into the um, funnel and then slowly lifting it out so that the top of the plants stay dry. So I guess I'm all finished in here. There are like white fingerprint dust all over the place. I would like to give them one more squirt. I'm gonna do. I finally found a cleaning spray bottle that allows you to take the top off. A lot of these that you buy at the store have the top stuck on, locked on. I'm using it because my other spray bottles suck. They're terrible. I had to chop off so many leaves. Once I found the aphid eggs and the aphids in here, I went and destroyed the plants. I just chopped them down. All the, I mean, not them down, but I chopped off almost all the fan leaves. A little crazy, I cut off maybe just a few too many fan leaves than I needed to, but I was freaking out. This leaf is, this is the one that was worrisome. This is probably the worst looking leaf in there. And it looks like it's got a little nutrient burn on it. I've grown some individual plants that went all the way through without any stress, but for the most part, the grows I've done so far have involved some stress. I don't like how the tops look like they didn't get enough uh, light. They almost look like they're trying to flower where they get really yellow in the centers. I noticed my timer isn't set to the right time of day, but it does have 18 hours of daylight, I believe. Yeah, and then we have 11 to five. So that all looks, that looks fine. 18 hours on the timer. So that's all set. We got water in here. Everything's got a layer of dust on it from that stuff. These guys, the dirt all looks dry because I strictly just used 
that, that uh, water funnel technique. But I sprayed with neem and aloe mixed into water that I watered with the, with the, I keep calling this a funnel, but is that what this is? I'm just gonna call it a funnel for now because I, I have no English language in me today. I don't, I'm not sure why. But it's, okay, well, so I gotta throw this away at some point. This is my channel, Local Media here. I got nomadic media for my travels. I got local media for live local music, a personal one for my family stuff, but I'm gonna put it on local media for them. Jazz, smooth jazz right here. And then there's also birds tweeting. I could do birds tweeting. I'll do soft jazz for now. How is that even possible? There's so much humidity. Uh, my gauge inside the tent says it's going up. I put it in the tent. That number's going up. I think we're as good to go as possible here. I might. I'm just gonna funnel in some of the last of the water I have for my pitcher. Ah, can't wait till the ladybugs get here. So when these start looking normal and they haven't been recovering and they've just been growing regular and all the bugs are gone, that's when I'll flip to flower. We started, they were two weeks old here, the seeds, final stage of flowering. Oh, that's the other thing. Nine weeks. What does that mean? Not sure. So 61 days, 60 days. Yeah, that makes sense. You would probably want to have your plants around for 60 days, 60 days before you go into flower. Good, so another week or two, 10 or 11 weeks, we'll flip them on over. We'll see, I might change my mind. You know, you know me, we're doing indoor activities with the cold weather. And that's what we're gonna be doing for quite a while. And I will let you know how we, how, what the outcome is with the ladybugs, I'll give you an update. But I wanted to follow up on the ladybug situation and the aphid situation. Just got back from Lowe's and I got some things, some things for the grow. I released the ladybugs in here and then I left the zipper open. Oh, I see one right there though. We'll see how that goes. The things that I put in there to get rid of the aphids might actually get rid of the ladybugs. So I'm not sure how well it's gonna go. Oh, I got some water left in here. That's good. Oh, resume caring for the plant as normal now. They were getting special attention because of the uh, aphids before, but now they're, I'm gonna give them regular attention. The ladybugs need help staying alive. So I'm gonna reverse everything. With uh, just water for now. I did some nutrients before, but that's not anything that's good or bad for the bugs. I'm not sure. Okay. See, here's the problem. I dumped the ladybugs in here. I put like 10 in there and then went out for two hours with the tent unzipped. But I do see that there's still some in here. All right, what are we looking at? This one, sorry, you can stand up, that's good. <laughs> You're, I'm still training these plants even though I'm trying to have ladybugs survive in here as well. Um, let's get the stuff rinsed off of the leaves. Yeah, that's good. I need to probably get my um, sprayer and use that for watering because it's a slower watering and the soil has time to absorb it. The way I've been watering with just a jar, like a bottle like this, it goes straight through because the soil is really light and it goes straight through and out the bottom and then makes a puddle there. But I do have it up on this lift, this inch high. Oh, there's a ladybug. 
Oh God, poor lady bug. If I get up the energy tonight, I will take them all out, put them in the other tent, clean this tent out thoroughly, and then put them back in here. Today or tomorrow? curtain on the neighbors and close this curtain on um, possible other neighbors, but those neighbors are far away. All good. Poor ladybugs. I really eradicated all the ladybugs uh, this summer when I used a insect repellent that I didn't realize how strong it was and it killed off all the ladybugs under my deck probably there's probably a multitude of other problems that I caused because of from killing the ladybugs. So I would definitely recommend never buy a product that kills good bugs. You need them because you're just going to have an outbreak of something weird. And you're going to be like, why? I've never seen this. Okay, see you later.